We cannot get any worse than a bunch of scum. Homophobic, racist, misogynistic, absolute pile of Banana Republic, Etonian piece of scum. Says Labour's deputy leader Angela Rayner during an event at the Labour conference late last night, according to the Mirror. Angela Rayner herself appeared on Sky News this morning to speak to Trevor Phillips, and she made clear that she did not regret the comment and was not sorry about it. Anyone who leaves children hungry during a pandemic and can give billions of pounds to their mates on WhatsApp, I think that was pretty scummy. Now that is a phrase, and let me contextualise it, it's a phrase that you would hear very often in northern working class towns yep. that we'd, we'd even say it jovially to other people, you know, we say it's a scummy thing to do. And that to me is my street language, as you would say, about actually it's pretty appalling that people think that's okay to do. Meanwhile, her party leader, Keir Starmer, was asked for his response by the BBC's Andrew Marr. Andrew and I take different approaches, and that is not language that I would use. Uh, she takes a different approach. To me, we have different approaches to how we get our messages across. It's not language that I would have used. You're a courteous man. Do you think she should apologise? Well, look, that's a matter for Angela. And this evening, LBC's Westminster correspondent Ben Kentish, who's at the conference in Brighton, got the reaction of former leader Jeremy Corbyn. Angela uses her own words. She's absolutely right to attack this government for the way it's treating the people in our society. Britain now has more food banks than branches of McDonald's, more children living in poverty, greater levels of inequality than ever before in my lifetime, and Angela's right to go after Tories. I wish this whole conference was spending its whole time going after Tories rather than rule changes. Do you think she should apologise for using that sort of language, even if you agree with the overarching sentence? I don't think she has anything to apologise for she she speaks from the heart she's saying it like it needs to be said now to talk more about this i'm joined by the independence chief political commentator john rental good evening john hello nick how utterly predictable instead of focusing their firepower outwards to the enemy ship they turn the cannons round take out their mainsail and sink their own boat <laughs> yes well there's an element of that certainly uh, i mean Keir Starmer surprised the shadow cabinet by saying he wanted, uh, he wanted Labour to stop turning inwards and talking to itself and then uh, proposed uh, some internal rule changes. And um, uh, Angela Rayner has done the same thing, really, by, um, by giving uh, ammunition to the party's critics by using this kind of language, which I think, you know, whatever you think of the Conservatives, if you're in any way doubtful about them or thinking about voting Labour, it's going to put you off. Uh, well, the definition of scum, I looked it up. It's a worthless or contemptible person or group of people. Yeah, well, I mean, it's interesting. It's a very interesting word, isn't it? Because there's no reason why it should be quite so uh, so terrible. Um, you know, because it's a rather inoffensive um, term of abuse. But it is a term of abuse, and I think it's... It's just its associations are, uh, are, are, are bad. I mean, it's not as bad as calling people body parts or uh, or, or even um, Nye Bevan calling the Tories lower than vermin. But uh, for some reason it does sort of set the alarm bells going. It just sounds, sounds horrible. It sounds like vulgar abuse. It does sound worse than the definition of the word itself, doesn't it? Yes. Yes. And something about the, the, the sound of it, I think it sort of sounds like scab. Um, I don't know. It's, it, but I mean, the point about it is that it's it, it's abuse and it's insult and it's not argument. It's just being rude about people for the sake of it, and it's not the way to persuade um, persuade swing voters of the rightness of your cause. And I think that's what's wrong with it, and uh, that's why she shouldn't have said it. But um, I mean, I kind of you know I kind of agree with Sir Jeremy Corbyn. Uh, surprisingly enough, that you know she's. She's an authentic person who speaks from the heart, and that's that's quite a valuable thing in politics. And the, th the other thing that Jeremy Corbyn said in a clip there was, of course, that um, it'd be just super if the Labour Party spent less time fighting itself in a purity contest and more time fighting the opposition. But they seem... No, well, he should have, she should have stayed away from the party conference if he believes that. So, uh, <laughs> you know, he's got absolutely no ground to stand on it. His supporters are causing all the trouble. Um, and if they just pipe down a bit, then uh, then perhaps Keir Starmer could have a go of attacking the uh, attacking the Tory government. 
Well, surely his supporters have um, good reason to be there. Um, they, they are they, they they make up a considerable number of the people who um, are members of the Labour Party. Why would they not be yeah. there? Well, because I mean, they're the people who are who are creating the civil war um, and um, d- ca- causing the distraction. I mean, if, if if you want to look at it like that, I mean, I agree. You know, Keir Starmer might not have been best advised to to push these rule changes now. But I mean, on the other hand, if if you think rule changes are important, then you you know you've got to put them through sometime. Um, so I think both sides have uh, have. Uh, you know, are at fault for that, um, and I think the con- you know the Conservatives must be rubbing their hands with glee. Oh, absolutely! I mean, it's just a, it's a dream come true. But it, but like I said before, it is so utterly predictable. If I had to sketch out what I thought was going to happen at the Labour Party conference last week, this is precisely what I would have predicted: that the all of the headlines would be about internal wrangling. And uh, yeah. this this member hates that member, and are you going to apologise? And it's as though Angela Rayner, she she didn't just walk into a trap. She fashioned a trap from whatever materials she could find around her, she, uh, stood back to admire her work, and then sauntered <laughs> straight in. Yeah, no, well, she she certainly lacks uh, restraint, um, which is another way of saying that she is. Um, you know, she's pretty unvarnished. She's 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 authentic. A lot of Labour people rather liked her performance in um, Prime Minister's Questions last week when she was allowed to take on Dominic Raab, the Deputy Prime Minister. Um, I mean, I thought it was more uh, more sort of showbiz than, uh, than than politics. I mean, she was she she was marvellous, but it wasn't really holding the government to account. Um, it was just that, being rude about your opposition. Right, but that is that is PMQs though, isn't it? I mean, the PMQs are not about politics. It is about show business. That's what that is. Well, I think you can have a bit of politics in there as well. I mean, I think that's what the best the best mix is to have a bit of uh, a bit of a political point to make, which uh, I'm afraid she didn't. It is an interesting word that you just used there, authentic, because some people say that uh, about in defence of Boris Johnson that oh, he's you know d- never mind about all the dreadful things that he's uh, ever said and done. He's authentic. He means what he says. They say the exact same thing about Donald Trump. All of the unhinged things that he <laughs> comes out with, people say, oh yeah. well, that's just Donald Trump. He's just being himself. So maybe Angela Rayner um, coming out with this kind of thing is exactly the sort of um, the, the the sort of uh, oomph to revivify a moribund Labour Party. Well, I think it's certainly th- th- there's a place for a bit of character, and I'm, I think that's one of Keir Starmer's problems is that he's 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 rather dull and uncharismatic. Um, uh, yeah, no, I think I think Angela Rayner can be compared to Boris Johnson in some ways. I mean, she is she's sort of wild and unpredictable. She uses she uses language which is probably you know best not not used if you think about it um i mean boris johnson's guilty of that on on many occasions um and she's not too bothered about getting her facts right either sometimes i mean she she had to go at dominic Raab over over achieving being a taxpayer funded mansion which it, which it isn't but i mean you know it, that's that is politics it's supposed to be colorful and and and, and vivid I'm just surprised that Keir Starmer handled the uh, the fallout from her her scum comment uh, quite so um, nervously and difficult difficultly. I mean, he just didn't didn't do it very well. He just made it clear that he didn't agree with her. What is interesting is that where we and the rest of the press are concentrating on the scum part and rather glossing over the racist, homophobic and misogynist part, which you can justify by simply repeating what um, Gove and Johnson have said and written in the past. Well, you can, but is it helpful? I mean, that's the, that's the question. Is it the way to persuade people uh, to vote Labour rather than Conservative, to, to, uh, to demonise your opponents in such colourful terms? And I, don't, I really don't think it is. I think... Uh, I think all Labour politicians ought to learn the lesson from Tony Blair, which was, which was to characterise your opponents in, in very restrained language, to disagree with them um, and gently lead the vote, voters away from them and towards, uh, towards the Labour Party. And that's, uh, that's not what Angela Rayner does by using that kind of language. 
Well, I wonder if there's a certain uh, sense of exasperation among the uh, leaders of the Labour Party. They they may have tried to gently lead the uh, public uh, <laughs> away from uh, this adoration that they have for Boris Johnson, uh, but nothing seems to actually work. Bare shelves, the prospect of Christmas being cancelled, uh, fights breaking out over petrol, we've got um, care homes in crisis. The, the country seems... <laughs> Maybe Kermit the Frog would be better to, uh, place to run the country and be quoting Boris Johnson rather than the other way around, and yet his popularity remains undimmed. Well, I'm not sure that's quite... I mean, Boris Johnson isn't that popular, you know. And, uh, you know, an awful lot of the um, stuff that's going to happen over the winter uh, hasn't happened yet. I mean, the universal credit hasn't actually been cut yet. Um, the you know the tax the tax rises haven't happened yet. The um, inflation hasn't really got going. I mean, once all those things do start happening, I I think Boris Johnson will become uh, less popular. Uh, the question is whether Labour's in a position to take advantage of it. Um, okay, well, let me ask you: Do you do you think that they are? Well, I think I, I think they could be. Uh, I think Keir Starmer has mishandled the start of of his conference and allowed himself to be sidetracked by all sorts of irrelevancies. But on the other hand, I think he has set out a, a reasonable prospectus. He does have the beginnings of a critique of the, of the government that's starting to make sense. Um, and I think, uh, I think it's possible if his party will let him. Um, OK, let me ask you that. <laughs> do, you, do you think that they will? Well, let's wait and see. Let's wait and see what uh, Keir Starmer's speech is like on, on Wednesday. I mean, I suspect, I mean, it's being built up as this sort of make or break, do or die moment for him. I mean, I don't, you know, these things always get built up too much in advance. It'll probably be quite a good speech, but he's not a great orator anyway. So people will say, well, it's a bit flat. Um, but I think he is setting out the uh, the basis on which he can prepare to be an alternative government, because I think he can he can portray himself as more competent, more thoughtful, uh, and just you know all around more serious than than Boris Johnson. I mean, it's not a very exciting prospectus, but I mean, I think people might have had enough of Boris Johnson's excitement after a bit. <laughs> Well, we'll see. Uh, thanks for that, John. That's John Rentoul, who is the chief political commentator for The Independent. Uh, well, Keir Starmer has not even delivered his speech yet, and already the reviews are in. It's a bit flat. So maybe Angela Rayner's uh, outburst, if you want to put it like that, is precisely what the Labour Party need. Or is it just the sort of thing that is going to turn people off? Keir Starmer refused to back Angela Rayner over her attack on the Tories, saying that he would not have used her words and suggested that they were not in keeping with a respectful political debate. So is it the way to uh, persuade people that uh, Labour Party, the Labour Party deserves uh, their vote uh, to demonise uh, the opposition? Or is um, a sort of Tony Blair-like politeness the way to go? Paul tweets, she could have articulated her disdain better. It's quite right to point out the lack of class of the current government, but to do it in a way that is equally lacking in class detracts from the point. You don't win arguments or elections with slurs and insults. <laughs> well, I'll tell that to Donald Trump. 0345 6060 973. Stanwell, hello, Michael. Hello there. Hello there. Yes, yeah, how are you doing? All right. Yes, good, thanks. Good, good. Yeah, I'm just looking up the, the uh, comments Angela made were obviously, you know, they're true. Um, but the, unfortunately, the people that she's trying to win back from, from places, you know, the, the Labour, Labour Party have lost them, are the people that voted for Brexit, um, that wanted, you know, all the foreigners out. So they're not going to vote for her just because she's going to tell them the truth about how the Prime Minister is. Um, it's going to make no difference to the people she's trying to get back on side, if you know what I mean. I do, but I'm not sure that that's what, what her intention was when she was saying those things. She was talking to uh, a group of uh, adherents, you know, to, right. talking amongst friends. She wasn't uh, standing on the conference stage addressing the no. nation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, well yeah, it was going to come out in the public, obviously, and, and, that, and that's what happened. Uh, people need to, well, people know how Boris is. He's, he's useless, and, um, you know, he's, you know, he obviously didn't want to leave Europe, but he, he's had to come on that on site to, to leave Europe to, you know, to become Prime Minister. So,
So um, the, the people that she's trying to, you know, not trying to get back, but um, unfortunately, most of the people that used to vote for Labour um, voted for Boris because they, they want to leave. They wanted to leave Europe um, at you know the rest of our detriment, uh, unfortunately. So. All right, thanks, Mike. Um, 0345 973 it, it, It's a specific demographic that voted to leave the European Union and who voted for the Conservatives at the last election. It's uh, people above the age of, I think, 60 is the cut-off point. If you... Uh, I know I've made this point before, but uh, it is interesting to note that if you take out pensioners, the pensioner vote, the the economically inactive be, uh, due to age, if you take those out, we would not have left the European Union and uh, Jeremy Corbyn would be our Prime Minister. It's the, uh, it's the over 60s that voted overwhelmingly for the Conservative Party, re uh, regardless of where in the country they happen to be. 0345 6060 973. Uh, Carnforth. Hello, Annie. Hello, Nick. Um, well, I just agree with her totally, really. Um, and if it had been me saying something, although obviously not in the same position, I probably wouldn't have used such polite terms. I, I, you know, I don't think you'd be able to broadcast what I think of them, right. especially as a disabled person who's seen a quarter of a million disabled people either having their benefits cut or lost them altogether and uh, social care being in such a state that now it's so defunded that it's completely dysfunctional and I live only 10 miles from Morecambe which is an incredibly poor deprived seaside town where there are children scavenging out of bins during the uh, school holidays because there are no school meals so you know she was telling it how it is and Angela Rayner herself comes from a family where she actually i've heard her being interviewed once where she's talking about her childhood and where her and her younger brother used to hang around at school friends houses in the hope that the parents of the, the school friends would give them something to eat because they were so hungry so it comes from the heart with angela rayner and i think people that comes over i think she's a really good speaker i think she knocks keir starmer you know she knocks spots off him i know she's quite fiery and but she wasn't talking to, like you said, she wasn't talking on the stage. She was just talking to a fringe group. Um, and I think somebody like her would appeal far more to people in the North, whether they wrote, voted Tory last time or not, because they voted Tory last time mainly because of Brexit. A lot of them had never voted Tory before. And they care about things like whether their grandchildren have got enough to eat and whether their schools are OK and whether they're going to be able to get social care or whether their elderly, very elderly parents are getting social care. You know, all those things, it, it's all very well them, you know, it's just all being about Brexit. By the time the next election comes along, things are probably going to be even worse the way things are going. And not to mention everything that's happened now at the moment, you know, like with the petrol shortages and driver shortages and shortages in the shops. I think maybe eventually people will get a bit sick of the sort of Boris the Clown and, you know, Brexit will be sort of a bit in the back of people's memories again. So I hope that, um, you know, they will come back to Labour, but I don't think they will with Keir Starmer because they see him, the, the people that voted for Brexit see him as an arch remainer and also that he's just seen as another bland London suit that and and they think he's posh as well, even though he isn't particularly... Well, the, the sir part doesn't yeah. help in that regard. No, no that's, it doesn't. that's right. And, but it, it, what's odd is that people think he, that Keir Starmer, is posher than Boris de Feffel Johnson, which, <laughs> which doesn't make any sense at all, but uh, fits right in with uh, the uh, rest of the crazy that's uh, surrounding us. But I just wonder if... Um, uh, re uh, regardless of whether everything you just said is true or not, the problem that the Labour Party have is it's just so utterly predictable. This, they are gifting headlines to the right-wing press and for the Conservative Party to go on a, um, a, a, a sort of a performance of being offended where they'll clutch their pearls to their chest and uh, go into a Victorian fainting fit and it'll all be about the language uh, as opposed to anything else. It, it's, a, it's essentially 
It's a trap. It's one of those political traps that she fashioned herself. It wasn't made by the opposition. She did it herself. And now, I know I'm guilty of talking about it, but I mean, it's it's in the news. This is a news talk show. So yeah. um, it's just it's just so typical of the Labour Party to create bad headlines for itself which will uh, subsume any other message that they have over the next week. I think these, the media do pick, always pick up on the slightest thing that goes wrong in the Labour Party, but I think the, the thing that really went wrong, even before the uh, conference started, was this business of wanting to start off all this internal changing how they elected the leader. I mean, how ridiculous. It just th This conference should have been about if... Keir Starmer wasn't a puppet of people like Peter Mandelson who want to change its back so that they, uh, nobody ever on the left of the party can ever get elected again. It shouldn't have been about that. It should have been about, this is the Labour Party. This is what we stand for now. This is, this is uh, put out some policies out there to actually inspire people to want to vote for Labour, not be fighting and navel-gazing again. Yeah. I thought, why did he do that? That was madness. It's just, like I said, it's so predictable. I could have told you what the headlines were going to be, I mean, well, not precisely, but well, the, the tone of them would be internal Labour fighting and they're wrestling each other to the ground in a purity test and uh, the uh, Conservative Party will just step nimbly over them and uh, win the next general election if they keep this up. Annie, I'm going to have to go, but thanks for that. 0345 6060 973. Uh, Gwenny in Edinburgh says, I'm not a Labour supporter, but in an age when you are unable to say anything at all, this northern girl has used her hometown language to bravely say what most of us think anyway. Vilifying her is just another distraction from this government's disasters. Yeah, it's a gift, is what it is. I mean, the, the government seems to um, spend all day long fashioning distractions and the Labour Party have just gifted them a massive one uh, when the headlines could have actually been about uh, policies and uh, Keir Starmer, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, becoming more uh, uh, enthusiastic or um, likeable or, you know, putting his stamp on the party. But <laughs> that's not what's happened at all. And it's their fault. Again, the left just can't get its act together. Um, Birmingham, Vidu. Hello, Nick. Vidu. Um, I love your shows. I oh, look forward to it. Oh, thanks. Um, yeah, I just wanted to draw your attention to an article written by Sarah Vine. I read it just about, oh, an hour and a half ago. Mm -hmm. Um, she wrote for the Daily Mail and she gave the rundown on Angela Rayner. And it changed my opinion of her entirely. I mean, this woman, this young woman is amazing she's feisty she stands for the rights of people in a way that i haven't seen other politicians do she was uh, brought up by her mum with bipolar who was illiterate she uh, was fed dog food because her mum couldn't read the cans she was uh pregnant at 15 she was brought up in a council estate and that's the way you, we have to recognize that that is the language that is used by a lot of people well the the back story um to um if i may call it that is perfect you're right but it what she the people that she's trying to reach not necessarily with the comments that we're talking about but just generally um, the, 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 what used to be the working class, um, they seem to be entranced with the poshest man in politics, with the possible exception of Jacob Rees-Mogg. <laughs> I don't think it's going to last very long. I remain an optimist. I think people recognise authentic people, and she is authentic. If the Labour Party had any sense whatsoever, they would elect somebody like her as a leader. She, she, there is a passion in her. There is a willing to fight. Her belly is full of fire. And that's what needed in the current climate. I mean, just because the, uh, you know this, and I know this, and everybody knows this, just because the Tories, some, most of them speak in a posh accent, they've been to the Bullingdon whatever club they belong to, they have 
dished out lots of insults in their nice, posh little way. Well, yeah. And they're just as cutting and damaging. Uh, it's, it's, I think what Angela Rayner has said has been mag- magnified because, one, she's a woman, and, two, because she dared to say it. Yeah, I, well, pr- probably right on both counts there, yes. the um, And the, the Conservative Party, members of the party, uh, certainly have been as rude. It's It's just... They cloak their rudeness in a pattern of politeness. In fact, they use politeness as a weapon. And um, Jacob Rees Mogg is probably most guilty of doing that. Yes. Uh, thanks, Vidu. Back to the uh, Labour Party conference, and the or headlines are all about, uh, just as you'd expect, they left, just cannot get their act together to uh, all uh, speak from the same script, and uh, they fall to the floor uh, wrestling with each other, uh, while the opposition steps nimbly over them to uh, its n- next uh, victory. The Daily Mail reported that during an event with activists in Brighton on uh, Saturday night, Angela Rayner said of the government, we cannot get any worse than a bunch of scum, homophobic, racist, misogynistic, absolutely vile, banana republic, nasty, Etonian piece of scum. Which doesn't scan very well, but um, it is uh, nothing if not emotional. She told Trevor Phillips on Sky News that she would withdraw the comments when Boris Johnson apologised for the controversial things that he has said. And it's right, he has said uh, famously... Um, and written down things that do correspond to uh, each of uh, the things that Angela Rayner pointed out. Homophobic, racist, misogynistic, vile, etc. and so on. In fact, Boris Johnson has offended um, as many uh, minorities uh, as in as florid language as possible for money. I mean, it's, it was his business model, essentially, when he was um, just a, a columnist for a newspaper. So... Angela Rayner's got a point, it's just that did she uh, make that point in the best possible way, uh, given that all of the headlines so far about the uh, Labour Party uh, conference are about her, the word scum particularly, and um, about uh, Keir Starmer's um, uh, attempt to change the internal voting um, mechanism for the uh, leader of that party. Not what they had in mind, I'm sure. Portsmouth. Hello, Harry. Oh, yes. Hello there, Nick. Um, I almost think I heard her uh, retract the word scum, did she? I was watching, I think, Channel 4 or ITN, and she was wearing a little backpack containing her speech, disappearing down some stairs at the conference. And the microphone and cameras were looking at the back of her head, and she turned slightly, and I could have swore, I might have been wrong, but I could have swore I heard her say, she retracted scum. She obviously didn't retract anything else because that was she couldn't have said that walking down the stairs. But right. I, I could have I, I heard her say. Well, I haven't retract, seen that, but uh, I retract that, scum. Right. Well, I, I don't know. Perhaps, uh, perhaps she did. You, you know uh, better than I did. I did not see that well, clip. Yeah, you, you know, it's just that bit where she's going disappearing down the stairs, being chased by people. She got that little backpack with her speech in the mm, back yeah, of them. Yeah, yeah, I know. And you, she turns. You, you, you said that, and I refer you to the answer I gave some moments ago. Uh, but thanks for that, Harry. I'll uh, I'll look that clip up. Clethero, hello, Steve. Hello, Nick. I'm uh, I'm slightly disappointed with you tonight. Oh no, what have I done? Never now? happened before. Yes. Well, um, I've been listening to LBC since I came to work at Tea Time, and uh, Camilla was on, and she was talking about this topic, about the scum comment. Uh, then Rachel was on. She did a show about it. And I thought that tonight you might have covered uh, James Gray saying that he wants to deliver a bomb to Annalise Dodds. Oh, yeah. I can't believe you've gone with this one, because not only has it been done to death already today, mm. um, but this is... A, such a bigger story, surely. This is an absolute stonker of a story. In the days that we're living in, uh, you know, violence from men against women, talking about bombs after what happened with Joe Cox, you know, talking about MPs needing more protection, and he's making jokes about needing to send a bomb. He'd like to send a bomb to her office. Yeah. I can't believe this one has been swept under the rug today, but it has. Well, no, it hasn't. It's, ha- it's had quite a lot of coverage. Um, but, uh, you know, it is the Labour Party conference, so they are, uh, you know, all the, all the journalists are there, so it's it's uh, top of the agenda. 
Um, and, uh, it's a big story, though. It's a big story, and well, you know it is. Kind of. I mean, it, it's just idiotic, is what that yeah. bloke was. Absolutely. And she's, she's the deputy leader, and he's... Um, I mean, who's ever heard of the guy? Not me. Not right. until today. Yeah. Well, I hope I haven't disappointed you too much, uh, Steve. But thanks for that. Southampton. Hello, Simon. Nick, how are we doing? Good, thanks. You know, the uh, National Guard, it sounds like it's our version of the Territorial Army. Yeah, that's what yeah, it sounded uh, like, yeah. I wonder if Marc Francois has got their posters all over his bedroom wall. <laughs> I, um, uh, there's probably no room for pictures of yeah. Churchill and flags. Oh, my God. Now, Angela Rayner is fantastic. She is absolutely fantastic. And if she can somehow get herself into the leadership, I think this country will... Well, I mean, look, this is what we need. Somebody real somebody that's come from real life to make the decisions that is what this country needs well you, you say that simon but all of the people mm. that you would expect to vote for the labor party not all of them but a significant number but more uh, that, that they need to get back voted for the poshest man who has ever run for prime minister well I think a lot of that. Listen, I'm I'm convinced. If Jeremy Corbyn had said those three words, "Get Brexit done," we would have a, we would have been looking at we would have been in the middle of a Labour um, power by now. I, I think it's all about those three words, and you know, we're at, we're we, we now know what that involves. We now know some of us can accept that it was you know a huge mistake, and we don't know where it's going to go. But the po the point is, and the, the the seriousness of it is, is that the poor people and those that are on the lower rungs of the ladder are going to get a worse deal from now onwards. And we need somebody who understands what life is really like in order, and I'm not saying about rejoining, although I would in a heartbeat, but if somebody can fashion um, life as, to, to work for everybody, it's got to start from the bottom up and Angela Rayner is just the person to do it. She's right. amazing. Okay, thanks, uh, Simon. Um, An uh, unsolicited testimonial. Uh, Guildford, hello, Peter. Hello, Nick. Peter. After decades of listening to fake new Labour MPs, I can't tell you how happy I am to finally see a working-class woman speaking from the heart, someone who knows what it's like to be poor. And she's right. They are scum. And the reason I say that is this. I remember the benefit cuts to the sick and disabled under Cameron and his ilk. Uh, now we're seeing benefit cuts to people on UC. They are scum. Let's look what the Tory party really are. They're the party of the rich. All they care about is money. Well, they put money before people. But yes, Peter, but I, I keep coming back to the point that the, the, you, might, you might think that they are the party of the rich, but they were put in power by the poor. It's difficult to get past that. And I wonder if this is the sort of thing that... Uh, it could go either way. I mean, Angela Rayner could turn people off with this kind of language. Or like you and like um, many callers this evening, is it might actually uh, revivify the people's interest in that party. They might, they might actually be shocked out of their uh, malaise and think, ah, finally, exactly what I'm looking for. So maybe it might work for her and uh, the uh, Labour Party. I suppose only time will tell. Shit liquor, user, self-abuser, jigger, jigger, black rock.